So when you look at, if you're going to reduce carbon, uh, this is what some of the results are, and this is what they look like. This is carbon and soot. Now, the carbon, uh, if you can focus on this ring that's around the valve, that's carbon buildup. In two weeks of application of, uh, of a piece of equipment, a diesel engine, you see all that carbon, that ring, it's all gone in two weeks. So there's an important thing that's happening here. If you break these things off in large chunks, this is not going to be good for the operation inside the engine. This is a little added benefit, which is actually huge. We break this carbon into non-abrasive uh, forms of carbon that it doesn't cause any trouble. Very, very key. There's a whole bunch of products out there with very aggressive solvents that want to eat up this carbon and leaves large chunks and they're bouncing around in the top of your piston and going down cylinder walls and scratching them. And you, you don't want to do any d damage to your rings. Any damage that you have or chips that's missing from the rings, you lose compression. So this is dealing with the carbon that's in the engine safely. So we turn this into this. And this is a win-win situation. Look at additional carbon. This is an EGR valve. Um, and again, the EGR is exhaust gas return or recirculating. They're going to recirculate uh, fuel uh, around the second time, as I told you before, because this is a mechanism to where fuel gets burnt because they didn't think it burned correctly. And they're true. Uh, that does happen. We can take and reduce this carbon from here to here and reduce this carbon in the EGR valve from this to this. This is going to look like somebody threw a new part into the picture. That's not correct. This part here is, is this part. This is what it was before fuel maximizer. And the seals that you see, these blue seals, never had to come off. Again, we build seal conditioners. You have to cover all the bases within a fuel system. There's a lot of moving parts here to protect. This is just one of them. And when, they, when that EGR valve fails, the engine shuts down. So these are critical parts to take care of. Another one in the same area is your turbo. Turbo runs, uh, which is turbocharging your engine. It's forcing air, it's, but it's driven by the exhaust. Again, the exhaust has these kinds of carbon and soot built into them, and that turbo has a tendency to slow down over time. What's a turbo do? Builds boost. What is boost? That's a pressure of air atomizing the fuel. Well, we atomize the fuel before it gets there, and then now we give more, you get more efficiency if you can keep that turbo charge spinning and get rid of all the carbon in there, it works more efficiently. Now your diesel engine has seen power and compression it hasn't seen in a long time. It takes a couple of minutes to explain this, but this is a win-win situation for a diesel engine. Now we get into water contamination. The XBL Plus technology, as you've already heard if you watched a little bit of the earlier video, you remember that we displace water. We actually push water. Same thing here. We're going to take, these are three test tubes, a red dye diesel. If you look at, this is emulsified water. It looks a little on the brownish side. That's emulsified water and fuel at the bottom. The black here is your bio band. This is every diesel engine on the face of this planet. If you're going to have a little bit of water and fuel, you're going to have this bio band, which is the, uh, the algae and the fungi, the water contamination, the corrosion that's going on. And these I refer to as critters. They're growing. This is, this is the algae and the fungi is an ongoing problem. Now, as long as you keep the water there, you're going to have the algae and the fungi. And it's always going to create this corrosion and oxidation. And, uh, and then at a period of time, this stuff dies and goes to the bottom of the fuel tank. None of this is good. So what we do, if you take the water away, the bio band goes away. This is no different than if you have old rotten food left in an area, you're going to have cockroaches. Well, if you want to get rid of the cockroaches, get rid of the food. This is the food source for the bio band. Let's get rid of it. And here's what we do. We help push the water to the top. 
How much did you ask? 58% of the water is removed, just left alone, in a six-hour period. So if it, it, this is in the test tube in the lab. 42% of it is emulsified. So 58% of the water is removed because we push it to the top and it evaporates out. The same thing on your vented tank going through a charcoal filter. We remove water out of that tank because we push it to the top. And the water, of course, being pushed to the top is now not on the bottom and your bottom fuel uh, that goes to your injector pump, that is coming off the bottom. So this is a big deal that you can help push the majority of the water. And what percentage are we dealing with? 58 and 42, if you add the two together, that's 100%. You've never found a product that's dealing with 100% of your water problems that are in diesel fuel. Uh, we got another slide that we're coming to, but on this same note here, if you have an engine that has been stored for a long period of time, you want to put one ounce per 30 gallons into it to help stabilize the fuel. Then, if, it, if you, that's for one that's been sitting there. If one that you're going to put into storage, like a boat, and it's in a marine application, you know there's several weeks or months that's going to go by, add this product before you store it. Okay, just to add a little benefit there. Fuel economy. We have to do this testing because we're dealing with commercial industrial accounts. This product can't, oh, by the way, maybe work and make retail claims, and it, it has to work. So, they, but they want empirical proof. This is a J1321 fuel cons, uh, consumption test done at Southwest Research Institute. This is 15.17% improvement. I really don't like this in our literature but because it's repetitive and it can be reduplicated in some applications, we put it in. I will tell you, on the road, uh, trucks, 18 wheelers, that mileage and fuel mileage is varying so greatly between the road condition, the wind, uh, the driver, the truck, the load, that that is not a perfect world. It's always moving around. So to get a constant measurement is almost impossible. This is why we have to go to a lab and they actually go to a controlled setting in a field to where they have sophisticated monitoring equipment. This is a $200,000 test. It's very, it's time consuming and very expensive. But this tells us that we have great results when we're in a perfect world. I don't and you don't live in a perfect world. I can't analyze equipment in this kind of detail every day going down the road. All I know is that I'm getting added performance and there are from fuel savings. Here's the numbers I'm going to give you. You should be able to net 5%. In the U.S., in this market right now, it's costing us about 1% to be able to use this product. That means if you got 6%, Subtract one from the six, you're going to net five. That is a real good number. I know this one here is more, but I would rather tell you this and let you discover this on your own application. Okay, that's on uh, fuel economy. Ultra low sulfur diesel. They're looking for lubricity being added because ultra low sulfur means they took sulfur from 500 parts per million down to 1.5, 15 parts per million. That was a dramatic reduction. There isn't any diesel engine that really likes that kind of reduction. You need an upper cylinder wear protection uh, in that combustion chamber. But they eliminated it. Now, there's a lot of additives that you can go buy that has lubricity built into their fuel product. Here's what they have to do. They don't have our technology. So they put a form of a lightweight oil. If you put oil in there, emissions goes up every single time. So if you see lubricity enhancement, you see emissions go up. Now, with our technology, the XPL Plus technology brings, and this is where you have to listen to me real closely. Don't misquote me. We have equal to 800 parts per million of sulfur with zero, none, no, no sulfur whatsoever in this fuel product. 
but through our technology we get 800 parts per million that your engine now goes it rest it says this is what I needed to help operate efficiently so this lubricity we're going to help with injectors and uh, and the pump failures that you run into excessive carbon buildup a cylinder wear um, you have uh, a whole bunch of things we'll actually reduce NOx with this product if you add lubricity NOx goes up okay getting to the injector spray uh, this is the end of the injectors this is without it and you can see there's a lot of carbon there this is with it so uh, you're going to get a better spray pattern but when you look at the spray pattern it comes out in a straight line and that's how your injector is going to work uh, what we do is I noted from the very beginning we're going to help atomize the fuel this picture right here this fan type spray that you're going to see that's the atomization happening before the turbocharger is pressurizing the plenum and then and which is a lot of forced air and they call that boost before all that happens this is a comparison with and without you do want to make sure the fuel maximizer is in your situation to be able to give you a better burned hydrocarbon cleanliness test this is an L10 injector it's a plunger test this one failed and this one of course that has our uh, technology in it the fuel maximizer and it's going to extend the life this is your injector and your plunger every time that uh, injector is being activated to squirt fuel into the combustion chamber um, adequate uh, uh, fuel quality effects as the deposit tendency the corrosiveness uh, of it and then lubricity and then the injector performance all of this is going to be enhanced 